Hi guys, Helly Happoween here. So um, today I'm very happy to show you that I have got my full Keyforge Age of Ascension deck box and we're gonna open all of these decks uh, one by one. So let's uh, start with the first deck and see what we get, right? So I removed the, uh, the plastic, let's open it up. Here we go, ooh, this is so nice. All right, okay, let's grab one. And let's see what we have. Okay. Good, good. Let's open them up. All right. So what do we have here? We've got Ziproid, the Shadow Master Gang Leader. <laughs> That's a cool name. So it's this Sanctum and Logos. Okay, go. So this is the index card. Let's move that up here. And let's see what we have. So we start out with Sanctum. All right, and then we have Logos. Okay, let's look at these. So what do we have here? The harder they come. Play. Purge a creature with power five or higher. Hmm. Is this a card from from uh, Call of the Archons as well? I, I seem to remember that. I'm not sure. Not sure. Okay, we got five of those. So purge a creature with power five or higher. That's nice, right? Could be strong against the player with Brotnar creatures, especially when Brotnar is so powerful now. We've got our first creature, Prince Derek the Unifier. So a four power, one armor creature. Has a playability, gain three amber if you control creatures from three different houses. Nice. Okay, so and the text is, ah, excellent. My father will be pleased. Very nice. Very pinkish. All right. Then we have another action card. Equalize, gives you an amber and says play, redistribute the amber on friendly creatures, among friendly creatures, and then redistribute the amber on enemy creature creatures among enemy creatures. So that's quite nice when there's a lot of capture um, capture tactics in play. You can uh, redistribute it to one creature or whatever and, and destroy that one. All right, so then we have another one. Take hostages for the remainder of the turn each time a friendly creature fight. It captures one ember and gives you an ember. So that's good. We've got two of those. Hopefully we have some more creatures to back that up. So we have a smite. This is also a new one. This looks really nice. Wow. Okay. Play ready and fight with a friendly creature. Deal two damage to the attacked creature's neighbors. That's nice. Okay, so we have another creature, that's good, that's good. So we've got a Sir Maros, four power, two armor. After your opponent gains an amber by reaping, Sir Maros captures it. All ambers, amber is ours by right. So that's, that's already quite nice. Okay, that's two creatures. Then we have a Shield of Justice, play for the remainder of the turn. Each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage, so that's also good. We've got a Protect the Weak. That's one amber. This creature gets plus one amber and gains taunt. That's good. We already know that one. Then we have another creature. Luckily, because we only have two creatures up till now. That was an upgrade to the last one. So here we have Borden the Redeemed. It's an elusive sanctum creature with an action capture two. Okay, that's nice. In combination with the redistribute action, could be nice. And we've got two of those. Okay, so I think I see the theme here. So we've got a Sir Maros, if it reaps, then he captures it. Gain three if you control, gain three amber if you control creatures from three different houses. Okay, so here's a lot of uh, capturing potential. And then here with our action cards, we've got this. Um, so take hostages also gives you capture when you fight. And then we have this equalize action to redistribute as we see fit. So that could be interesting. Not a really big fan of this Sanctum House, but it seems interesting. Uh, it's only four creatures, so yeah, we'll see. Let's have a look at the second house, and that will be Logos. All right, so here we go. We start out with our Neutron Shark. So one power creature, we know this one from Call of the Archons. So what it does is on a play, on fight, and on reap, you can destroy an enemy creature or artifact. 
and a friendly creature artifact. Discard the top card of your deck. If that card is not a Logos card, trigger this effect again. So this could be really nasty. It can also be nasty for yourself, so you have to be careful. All right, then we've got a Sloppy Lap Park. So you archive a card and discard a card and you gain an Amber. That's nice. We've got a Seismo Entangler artifact with an action. Choose a house during your opponent's next turn. Creatures of the chosen house cannot be used to reap. All right. That can be interesting, nice. Then we've got another, so that's an artifact. We've got a creature here and we've got an action there. So a Titan Librarian, this seems to be the bread and butter for uh, logos uh, at the end of your turn. If Titan Librarian is not on a flank, archive a card. So that's quite nice. You see again the location awareness uh, and uh, Age of Ascension. So that's really nice, okay. Standardized testing. Play, destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. Nice. Could be very powerful. All right. We've got another creature, a Professor Sutterkin. Reap, draw a card for each friendly Logos creature. We already have two, so that's nice. So this is also a really cool card. We've got two of those, so that's nice. We can be sure that we draw into that one. And then a Library of Babel, action, draw a card. Always very nice, a very good card. We've got two of those, so that's really nice. Okay, so we've got three artifacts. Uh, then we have a lapwork, archive a card. We already had a sloppy lapwork, so that's good. A binate rupture, it's an alpha card. That's one of the new uh, keywords. So this means that you can only play this card before doing anything else this step. So that includes playing card, using a creature, using artifact. You can't do that. This has to be the very first thing that you do. And if you do it, each player gains amber equal to the amber in their pool, so you basically double the amber, right? And then we've got an Archimedes. So a lot of people are very excited about this card, uh, especially how it works. Um, so it's an elusive and each of Archimedes' neighbors gains destroyed, archive this creature. So that could be very nice. We've got a nice pool of uh, Logos cards here, I think. We've got an Archimedes, two Professor Sutterkins, which could allow us to really draw a lot of cards. We've got a Tidal Librarian to Archive and a Neutron Shark to wipe out the board. And then again, we've got uh, two Libraries of Babel. So when we have Logos, we have a lot of drawing power, basically. If you look in the action, um, in the action for the actions, we've got Labworks of the Labworks, so we can archive stuff. We've got standardized testing and a Binate Rupture. So I think all over, uh, all around, I think it's quite a nice uh, Logos house. All right, let's look at the final one. That's this, I'm quite excited for that. Ooh, an Onyx Knight. So I really liked, I really liked these ones when they, um, they spoiled them via the, uh, the Fantasy Flight articles. So um, it has a playability, destroy each creature with alt power, right? So, okay, let's, let's look at that. So each creature with alt power, that's quite important, right? So that's good, two, 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 four, one, so this one would be destroyed, so that's good, only the the shark would be destroyed, that's fine. And if you look at our Sanctum cards, what do we have here? A four, a four, and then two threes, right? So it's fine. Overall, till now, it's fine. We'll see what we have in the uh, in the this section. So we've got our Onyx Knight, and the flavor text is, I will not be denied. Very nice art. Love this card. We've got a Gongoozle, gives you an Amber, and says deal 3 damage to a creature. If it's not destroyed, its owner discards a random card from your hand, so you disrupt your opponent's hand. This is a card we know from Call of the Archons. We've got a Yurk. Um, so play, choose, and discard a card from your hand. So that could be nice to cycle through um, yeah, bad cards in your hand that you want to get out, so that could be nice. right? Imagine you have, for example, a 2-2-2 two, two, two starting hand and you've got like, you, for example, you've got the Onyx Knight and a Yurk. What you could do is you could play the Onyx Knight, play the Yurk, and then uh, remove one of those uh, other 2-2s two that you that you don't want to have, right? So it could be useful. I like it. It's a good card. So these are our creatures. These are our actions. Here we have another action, Unlocked Gateway. So basically the the what I would call the revised version of um, um, Gateway to this, right? Actually, I think a better a better gateway to this. So it's an Omega. So if you play this, you can't do anything else. And I think that's really fair. So uh, you really have to think like, will I play this card but give my opponent um, the possibility to build up his board again? 
or will I wait, right? So play destroy each creature, and the flavor text will just lock it again by quickso. All right, then we've got a Tesmal, that's an elusive creature with a reap ability. Choose a house, your opponent cannot choose that house as their active house on their next turn. So Tesmal, look at this art, wow, this is really beautiful. So Tesmal is basically Restringuntus from the Call of the Archon set, right? But um, built into a reap ability. All right, so then we've got Schooler, we know this one. If your opponent has four or more Amber, steal one, we know it. Uh, we've got a Gup. So while Gup is not on a flank, it gets plus five power and gains taunt. But the flavor text don't go into the light. Wow, this is some really nice art. So while it's not on a flank, it gets plus five power and taunt, so that's really powerful. All right, nice. So we've got a lot of creatures on this side. Um, now we have a Dust Amp, destroyed, gain two Amber. That's always good. We've got a Cold Weak. Destroy the least powerful enemy creature. It gives you an amber. That's nice. We've got Binding Irons. <laughs> One of the most annoying cards you can imagine. So play your opponent against three chains. And it has the following um, flavor text. I will not chain you. You have already chained yourself through your blind affection for these mortals. By Judge Slenderville Archon. Nice. Really nice card. We've got one of those, that's good, otherwise we'd be overkill. Then we have a Banish, gives you an Amber, and play, put an enemy creature into your opponent's archive. So you can banish it for some time, but it will go into his archive, so you have to think about that one. And we've got another Banish, right, so we've got some ways to remove creatures, that's nice. I think we've got a nice suite of um, these creatures going on here. There are also a lot of... Um, even powers, right? So that's good for in combination with the Onyx Knight because it destroys all power creatures. So I think that's good. Tesmal is really nice. Uh, Gub and Dust Emb is also good. I think Dust Emb is really nice in combination with uh, Archimedes, of course. Um, so overall, I think I think it's it's nice. Uh, definitely worth a shot. So I will uh, play test it. Uh, as fast as possible on uh, the Crucible when it's finally up to date with the new set uh, and otherwise I will play it uh, in real life and I'm also hoping to shoot some more gameplay, real life gameplay videos pretty soon. Alright, so thanks for watching and see you soon for the next uh, unboxing. Bye!